So recall that we had talked about four different strategies to handle control hazards. Panic and do nothing. By default, fetch the next instruction. Use the compiler to populate a branch delay slot. And then the fourth option is the hardware approach. So now let's talk in more detail about this fourth hardware approach. And keep in mind that I'm now doing away with the branch delay slot option. Right? So the branch delay slot was introduced just so the compiler could put something useful into the branch delay slot. But once I decide to take the hardware route, I'm going to do away with the branch delay slot and any help from the compiler. Okay, so let's skip this part and let's move on to what I would do if I could do this entirely in hardware. Right? So remember that I fetch an instruction in cycle one and it's in the second cycle that I'm figuring out you know, which way this branch is going and I'm trying to decide the new branch target. But in the meantime, I have to fetch something else in the second cycle. Right, so PC has to be set with something in the second cycle so I can do something useful. And I, I know that by the third cycle, this decision will influence the PC and instruction fetch in the third cycle will be from the correct location. So what I'm trying to do is do something useful in the second cycle. By default, what I do is while I'm doing an instruction fetch, I increment PC by four and I update the PC, which is, you know, in this figure is updating this PC here. And so, my default prediction is that the branch will be not taken and I'm just going to increment PC by 4. Now it turns out that if I add something smarter over here, if I add like a black box over here that says that, you know, let's look at past history, let's see how this branch has behaved in the past and accordingly I'm going to make a smart decision and I'm going to decide if this branch will be taken or not taken. If I make a smart guess about not taken, then I will increment the PC by 4 and set it correctly in the second cycle. But if I make a guess about taken, then instead of incrementing PC by 4, I will just set PC to be wherever this branch jumped to the last time I saw this branch. And so that way, instead of just moving on by default to the next instruction, I sometimes jump and execute instructions from a different location. And every time I'm correct, I've ended up you know, doing something useful right here. So that's the whole point of having branch prediction, right? So I'm replacing that PC plus 4 default prediction with a black box over here that can intelligently decide whether I should be taken or not taken. And branch predictors, you know, they were designed in the late 80s, early 90s. And over time, they've evolved to be fairly sophisticated. So if you look at a modern processor and a, and a modern branch predictor with an accuracy of as high as close to 96%, I can decide if this branch is going to be taken or not taken, right? So this means that only 4% of the time I choose to go the wrong way. And so it's only 4% of all branches that end up costing me a cycle because I fetched something that was useless. Okay, so let's see how we can design this branch predictor to have these very high accuracies. Let's start with a very basic branch predictor. So before I explain this general organization of a branch predictor, let me just take a more manual, simple approach. I look at my code and I say that there are four branches. Okay, and so for each one of those four branches, branch one, branch two, branch three, and branch four, I'm going to dedicate one entry in my branch predictor. And this entry is nothing but a two-bit saturating counter. So it essentially has values between you know, 0, 0, 2, 3. Right? So it can have four possible values. Every time branch 1 is taken, I increment its corresponding counter value. Every time branch 1 is not taken, I decrement its corresponding counter value. So when I start out, you know, maybe this has the value 0, 1. Let's just say that's my starting counter value. If branch 1 is taken, then I increment this value and it becomes 1, 0. Sometime later I see branch 1 again, again the branch ends up being taken. So then I increment the counter value again, it becomes 1, 1. And let's say that branch 1 is very heavily biased towards being taken most of the time. So as I keep seeing it as being taken, 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 I keep incrementing the counter value. This is a saturating counter, that means when I hit the maximum value, if I try to increment it again, it just stays there, right? So it basically remains at 1, 1 for the next many cycles. And I'm going to use this counter value to decide which way this branch has been biased and what my prediction should be. 
So the next time I encounter branch 1, I'm going to look at this counter and it says 1-1. One, one. That means in the recent past, this branch has been taken. And I'm going to assume that the branch is going to behave exactly the same way that it behaved in the recent past. So my prediction is going to be taken. And if indeed history repeats itself, you'll see that this prediction is going to be correct. That in the next few instances as well, the branch will continue to be taken. Meanwhile, let's look at branch 2. Let's say it was again initialized to 0, 1. And let's say that this branch was very heavily biased towards being not taken. So every time I see the branch is being not taken, I decrement the counter. So it goes from 0, 1 to 0, 0. And again, it's a saturating counter. So as the branch continues to be not taken, I continue decrementing and it just stays at 0, 0. And so the next time I see the branch, I first look at the predictor. I look at this counter value. It says 0, 0. So I make a prediction that the branch is going to be not taken. And again, if history repeats itself, this ends up being a correct prediction. If it's an incorrect prediction, then I've basically wasted a cycle. But then I start to correct my counter. And I say that this branch was just taken, which means I should be incrementing the counter value. And then I look at what happens in the next cycle. If the next cycle was also taken, then this gets incremented further to 1, 0, and so on. Right. So basically, if a branch's behavior changes, it may move from a 0, 0, you know, up all the way to 1, 1, right? So each counter value may have a different, may end up at a different value. So branch 3 may end up having a counter value of 1, 0. This may have a counter value of 0, 1. This ends up at 0, 0. This ends up at 1, 1, right? So over time, the counters have trained themselves and they may end up at these four different values. So when I see branch 1 next, I'm going to look at the counter value. This is strongly biased as taken. So I'm going to make a prediction that branch 1 on its next execution is also going to be taken. I look at branch 2, it has a counter value of 0, 0. This is strongly biased as not taken. So the next time I see branch 2, I'm going to make a prediction that this is not taken. Let's look at branch 3. If I look at its counter value, it has been trained to be a to to have a value of one zero. This is weakly biased as taken. So when I execute branch three next, I'm going to make a prediction that the branch will be taken. I'm just not very sure, but I'm still going to make the guess that it's taken because seemingly in the recent past, this branch was taken more often than not taken. Okay, and then similarly at for branch four, since it has a counter value of zero one it's weakly biased as not taken. And so when I encounter branch 4 next, I'm going to predict not taken. Right. So the prediction essentially depends on the most significant bit of the counter. If the most significant bit is a 1, as in these two cases, I'm going to predict taken. If the most significant bit is a 0, as in these cases, I'm going to predict not taken. Okay. So I hope you've understood how these counter values basically work. If a given branch ends up being taken, its counter value is incremented. If that branch ends up being not taken, its counter value is decremented. To make a prediction, I just look at the most significant bit of the counter. That tells me what the common case is in the recent past. And that guides me towards a prediction for the future.